in the previous video we talked about inter process communication we saw the two models like the shared memory model and the message passing model so we saw that shared memory model uh, was like uh, the two processes p1 and p2 they actually communicate with each other through the uh, through some shared memory and uh, message passing model was like there was uh, a communication link between the two process trying to communicate with each other so in this video we'll focus more on the shared memory model so the shared memory whatever we have so it should actually be uh, a part of the address space of the process that is creating it so now if we consider p1 so let's say p1 wants to talk to some other process p2 so what p1 will do is it will actually create the shared memory in its address space so this is the address space of uh, p1 so p1 will actually create the shared memory in its address space and the other process which wants to talk to p1 what it should do is it should actually attach this shared memory to its address space as well so so it will actually go ahead and attach this shared memory to its address space so in such a way the shared memory will actually be shared by the two processes uh, so p1 and p2's address spaces will actually have both the address spaces will have this shared memory so using this shared memory these two processes can now talk to each other now usually um, what happens is that operating system doesn't allow one process to you know like access the address space of some other process so if you want to have the shared memory model implemented then we should make sure that these two processes um, remove this restriction of uh, you know not accessing not be able to like access the address space of the other memory so that restriction has to be removed now uh, one thing is that um, operating system is not involved in uh, creating all this shared memory as we saw it is the processes which will actually do all this so process should handle the creation of shared memory they should handle how the form of data would be like where the data would be written and where it would be read from all this ha has to actually be handled by the programmer it's not the job of the um, OS here. So application programmer should actually take care of everything. So he should take care that uh, we don't go and write on the same location also. Like all those handling should be actually added by the application programmer. So there is one problem called uh, producer consumer problem. What this problem will actually tell you is that uh, so there is this producer process which will actually produce some uh, items which have to be consumed by the consumer uh, process so like for example we have this um, uh, we can actually take an example of comp compiler and assembler so what compiler will do is compiler will actually produce the assembly code this assembly code should actually be consumed by the assembler then it will actually produce your um, objects which will actually be consumed by the loader so, Again, like if you just consider this part, consumer here is the assembler, compiler is the producer. What it is producing is the assembly code which will be consumed by the assembler. So it will produce assembly code which will be consumed by assembler. Now it has to produce this, it has to store it somewhere and then that has to be actually uh, consumed by the assembler. So this production of something and then consumption of the same thing will actually be done using this shared memory concept so whatever the producer produces that will be stored in the shared memory and then consumer will consume that producted uh, that produced uh, like data from the shared memory now so the shared memory will actually be your buffer so it will basically be a buffer now this buffer can actually be of two types one is unbounded and the other one is bounded so unbounded buffer is a buffer which usually has like I mean it doesn't have any limit so you can basically uh, like insert as many data items as you want in this buffer this is an uh, infinite uh, buffer kind of bounded buffer is a finite buffer it has a limit so you cannot uh, keep on adding so if it is an unbounded buffer the producer can actually keep on producing and adding items into this buffer but consumer would have a restriction wherein it cannot consume anything uh, if the buffer is like empty. So 
whereas in bounded case producer should not uh, produce anything if uh, the buffer is full so if the buffer is full if you go ahead and like i mean you won't be having any space to put the produced item and consumer again should not uh, try to take something if the buffer is uh, empty it should not be trying to consume something from the buffer so these kind of handling should be added with the application programmer now there there can be one more problem here wherein uh, the producer is producer and consumer both are trying to access the shared location simultaneously so in such a case it can have um, i mean there can be some kind of synchronization issues so all this synchronization related um, handling should also be added with the application programmer now this buffer how do we implement this buffer so this buffer is usually implemented as a circular array so this would be an array we will basically have um, two variables so let's say this is our uh, circular array we will basically have two uh, variables two pointers called in and out so initially both these uh, pointers will be pointing to the very first index so if producer uh, produces something what we'll do is the produce item will first put in the index pointed by in and then increment this index by 1 so this is how production works consumption will actually be um, it will take the value from this index pointed by out it'll take this and then will increase uh, the out pointer now if in and out are equal then it means uh, the buffer is basically empty and if in is actually one greater than the out then in that case it would it means that the buffer is full so in such a way we can basically implement this buffer so in the next video we'll discuss more on the message passing model